This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. I'm James Justin. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Nicholas Wildstar out of Fresno. Nicholas, I wanted to talk to you today because I was at my grocery store the other day collecting groceries, and we're all standing in line with these new social distancing rules. So there's like eight people in line. And it goes all the way around to the back of the store, right? Because it's a relatively small, smart, and final. Mm -hmm. And there's a tension in the air. You know, there's a guy sitting on his phone. He kind of wanders out of line with his wife. He goes out with his wife, and he wanders a little bit out of line. Comes back in, and some guy goes, hey, the line's back here. There's a strange tension in my neighborhood that hasn't existed before. Yeah. And so I was going, you know, I wonder what it's like in other places. Hey, let's talk to Nicholas, because Nicholas is a man <laughs> of the streets. Oh, yeah. You know, you're one of the few people like me who actually, you know, go out and walk the streets and talk to people. And so I Absolutely. wanted to talk. I want to talk to you and see how is Fresno going? Uh, Fresno has been reacting a bit of the same way. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, odd how uh, the majority of the public has wholeheartedly embraced this like herd like mentality where we feel like we must separate e from each other. And um, if you are too close, you know, within the vicinity now, you're uh, invading their personal space and now you're a danger. You know, they've made that now uh, kind of like the premise on how people engage with each other is they see each other as a threat now. I mean, um, if you if you're not wearing a mask, they're looking at you like you're crazy. And then when you're wearing one of these masks, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're still looking at you like you're crazy. So. I mean, you, you can't win for losing now, but um, yeah, it is sad because um, I've gone out to several, you know, uh, grocery stores such as yourself and uh, have seen the new protocols put in place where they have, you know, uh, painted lines on the floor. And now all of a sudden they have, you know, glass between you and the cashier and uh, <laughs> they have security, armed security guards at the doors. I mean, it's just quickly overnight become a police state. And um, we're seeing more and more applications of that on a, not only a nationwide scale, but on a worldwide scale. It's, it's scared to see it happen. So um, I'm encouraging everybody to definitely pay attention to what's happening to your freedoms and liberties, uh, your God-given, you know, <laughs> um, natural rights, uh, whether you believe in God or not, you were born with these natural rights that are now being infringed upon and threatened. So um, it's up to us to take it upon ourselves to defend them. Yeah, they're not even making any sense. Like you saw the, the other day, the, uh, the rest of that canoeer, the paddler out in the ocean, the guy's mm -hmm. by himself in the ocean and they took two right. cops to go arrest him. You know, oh, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> the guy was literally hurting nobody. He had no potential of harming a single person. And then you took two people and you've kind of you've actually created the conditions where you've actually you're endangering people. Exactly. I mean, it's absurd that we've uh, we now have made public places where you can be completely isolated, like you said, in the middle of the ocean of all places um, and uh, now have made that unlawful. You know, um, I seen a video where a guy was jogging on the beach by himself. Nobody around because, uh, you know, nobody's on the beaches right now. And the cop started chasing them. <laughs> and the guy out ran the cop. It was just like, <laughs> hi, you know. <laughs> Thank God he did. But, um, yeah, the, the cop that was chasing them had no protective wear on, no mask, no gloves. And it's crazy that we're seeing, you know, arrests of people out in the public with these um, law enforcement personnel not even uh, uh, abiding by the law, laws themselves. So uh, quickly overnight, uh, we have new laws, new rules being imposed upon us that we must abide by, comply or die, um, pretty much, or end up in jail at least. <laughs> but um, they're enforcing these rules upon us and they're using physical force to do so. I mean, um, you know, to subdue the, the guy on the beach, they had to chase him down. They also were not wearing protective wear. Um, I seen a video out in Florida where some um, spring breakers were out at the beach in Miami Beach, and um, they were chased away by, I, I believe, more than a dozen police officers. None of them were wearing protective wear. Uh, 
three of them in the video assaulted uh, some of the party goers and basically physically assaulted them and, and arrested them. But uh, none of them were wearing protective wear. And uh, we're seeing the application of the police state upon we the people, you know. Yeah. And we also exposed some uh, some sexism in the policing. I saw the other day there was a family, a husband, a wife and a daughter. We're out playing te- We're out playing uh, wiffle ball. And who did they handcuff and arrest? It was the father. The wife was out there just as much was just as violating the law as the man was, yeah. but it was the man that they arrested. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what's going on because um, they are emptying the prisons with certain, I guess, violators of laws, <laughs> uh, supposed criminals, but they're emptying the prisons to put certain other people in there. Um, what I'm thinking is they're hoping that the people that they put in prison because now they're they are able to um you know hold you in jail indefinitely thanks to the ndaa and uh further applications of these COVID 19 rules that they can hold you indefinitely and um unless you have an attorney and you know can uh pay bail and get out of jail you're going to be sitting in jail because they aren't even operating a court system right now so there aren't any judges there there aren't any prosecutors there's nobody looking over cases so uh pretty much the police are judge executioner and jury uh i guess or judge jury and executioner like uh judge dread uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, and the video that you're talking about, he was a former police officer himself, you know, a former state trooper. So, <laughs> um, and it, it's sad that uh, also on the sexist side, we're seeing, um, uh, I guess, people that are speaking out, a lot of celebrities. We have uh, actresses such as, um, I forgot their, her name, but uh, the actress that was in uh, Ann Woman or Ant-Man, uh, she was Ant-Woman pretty much, or the Wasp, but uh, the actress that played um, in that movie, as well as a few other singers, uh, females, um, there was a female broadcaster on Fox News that was ousted because they are speaking against the narrative, you know, and, and it's sad that we're seeing more women being targeted on that side, but then when it comes to, you know, um, action, they're targeting the men, you know. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a strange time we're living in. It's you, you wonder how we allowed uh, Japanese to get interned, and we're watching exactly how it happened right now. We're, we're sitting here watching the process of how that happened. Yeah, sadly, I mean, um, we. I, I personally, I'm not sure about yourself, but uh, uh, libertarians have known about FEMA camps and have spoken uh, hourly about them for a long time. Um, I know personally I have, but these FEMA camps have existed. Um, they were had been set up ever since um, ever since 9/11, and um, situations like Hurricane Katrina even further uh, exacerbated the situation where they now have, you know, armed personnel at these centers, these uh, disaster centers that they're calling them. And now they're creating even more of them. They just created one here in Fresno. Uh, They were going to um, set up, I believe, 250 um, emergency beds, like a, I guess, an impromptu hospital at the fairgrounds. But uh, the state turned it away. I guess uh, there was some uh, uh, a lawful issue. But uh, the convention center of all places said, yes, it's OK to have it here. So our convention center now is being used as a emergency center where there are uh, National Guardsmen down there. So I'm planning on going down there and making a video of this myself so I can show you guys out there what's going on. So uh, be sure to, of course, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to be sharing those videos and um, on my social media as well. Yeah, no, it's, I find this all very disturbing because I noticed, uh, what, a week or a couple of weeks ago, you'd put back on your mask that you'd shown us. Uh, <laughs> and and return, yeah, return back to your kind of your beginning activist roots when, when you first kind of came to California, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, I have. I've lived in California since 1999, so, <laughs> but um, I started donning the mask around uh, 2008, 2007, 2008. I saw the movie V for Vendetta, 
Um, if you haven't seen that movie, please see it now. But it was a very inspirational film. It moved me in many ways, um, especially after 9-11 and, and starting to see the oppressive nature of our government on our day-to-day -day lives, you know, and the, the infringement of the, um, what is it, the Patriot Act upon, you know, our uh, personal information now being readily accessible to the government. We have institutions that have been created be because of that, like the NSA, that is now embedded into our society. So uh, we need to get rid of it. Um, the TSA also has been a product of that. But um, V for Vendetta, if you haven't seen that movie, please do see it. Uh, the guy, in the, the main character in the film wears this mask, you know, <laughs> and uh, his name is V. So it's I think it's time we start expressing some vigilance and um, some resilience against the oppressive regime uh, that is being, uh, you know, built up here. I mean, we we created the government. So where to blame? If it gets out of control and we're not holding it accountable, that's because we're allowing it to, uh, you know, oppress us. And um, it, it, in the movie, of course, they talk about fighting against that and everybody rising up. And at the end of the movie, you know, I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but um, <laughs> a lot of people are inspired to do that. And that's what I feel like is necessary right now. So in, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, uh, I, what is a respect to the film as yeah. well as solidarity to those out there that want to fight against, you know, what's going on in the world. Um, pick up your mask, you know, join, hit the streets. Yeah, do what we need to do. Yeah, it's, it's a symbolism thing. It's like, you know, it, there's a meaning behind the mask. It's not just the mask exactly. that's behind you. It's there's no, a, a resilience all. about, no, our government has gone too far. We have allowed it, so we must now take it back. Exactly. And it's, it's our responsibility It's to do it. And, you know, for those of us who have been voting against the grain for a long time, we right. can, well, maybe we haven't done it enough to get our viewpoint out there. We, we haven't done it right way. You know, there's, <laughs> we have to accept responsibility for ourselves. You know, even if, even if we've done the best we can, well, we obviously haven't done it well enough. And so we have to get back to work. And so that's, you know, that's what we try to do up here, but, you know, it's hard, right? It's it's a hard it's a hard slog to be continuously driving towards uh, basic human rights every oh, single day. It's crazy that freedom would be a hard sell, you know, in a free country. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the idea that law enforcers must break the law to enforce the law has become uh, a, a state of mind that most people accept. Um, and it's not ideal to the characteristic of the resilient nature of who we are as Americans, um, you know, and, and to be a patriot, we must be fighting against tyranny in all shapes and forms. Even if it's our own government, we should love our uh, country. We don't have to love our government, you know, <laughs> um, no. so we need to start showing more love for country more than ever. Yeah. And it's so frustrating to me because I've watched some of the same people who spent the last three years complain about a rising tide of fascism are sitting now are applauding with essentially the tools of fascism being imposed. Right. Exactly. I, actually had, yeah. I had a guy on MSNBC was watching an MSNBC quote with Rachel Maddow the other day, and she had a, a doctor on who said that we need to go test everybody every day for their temperature. And anybody with a temperature needs to go sent to a healthcare camp. Oh, my God. Yeah. And these it, are the same people who are going like, you know, these, these <clears throat> awful immigrant cramps are, are somehow immoral. Yeah. But, but sending every American to a healthcare camp because you have a fever is fine. Uh, where right. are these people, uh, you know, do they or have any forcing, forcing people to yeah. get tested? You know, it's like, uh, and it's crazy. You're right. It's, it, we're seeing it be spoken of on the left, on the extreme left, on the right extreme right you know and even people in the center i've heard people in libertarian circles support uh staying home you know of all things and uh <clears throat> it's just sad that <clears throat> we see people from whatever political class whatever financial class now you've been separated by essential and non-essential you know <laughs> uh so we've seen these this uh further division of people happening at the same time 
Um, and it's kind of like a, a, a micro dissection, if you will. And government is very, or the people that crafted this whole uh, social experiment called civilization are very crafty in, you know, <laughs> and knowing how we work uh, as human beings. Uh, there's been tons of studies over time. And um, so we, if anything, got to start making up ground uh, by uniting putting aside any and all differences that we may have, whatever your race may be, um, whatever your uh, sexual you know, uh, orientation may be, or whatever the case may be, people that have prejudice against those things, put it all aside, unite, see what's going on. We can get rid of you know, the people that are in charge because they're still just a, a group of people they're yeah. not, you know, <laughs> not guys, they're just people. They, just, yeah. they put their pants on and, and they educate themselves just like the rest of us. They're just people. Yeah, exactly. And you can see and touch those people. <laughs> oh my God, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So uh, if, if you want to do something about it, there they are, you know, and uh, we can remove them. And they're assuming in a position in, in a society that's not wanted, uh, they should not be the authoritarian over our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, they not sh should not be the oppressor of our uh, expression of our freedoms and liberties. We should be able to go outside and go to a park or a beach or you know whatever the case may be. If they if we want to socially distance each other away from each other, then so be it. It should be voluntary, and we've gotten away from a voluntary society to where you know. Um, uh, totalitarianism is more um, embraced. So uh, I, I, again, encourage anyone and everyone out there to uh, learn about libertarianism because <laughs> it definitely could work right now. We, we need some of that. Uh, so I'm, I'm asking everybody to um, actually boycott the vote. Don't vote for a Republican or Democrat. You know, uh, we need to get away from the two party system. Vote for a libertarian, vote for a Green Party candidate, vote for an independent candidate, vote for somebody else. Just these guys got to go. And if we want to civilly and peacefully uh, get rid of them, this is a way to do it. And you only need to do it one cycle. You, you, exactly. vote, you vote them all out one cycle, you'll send the message clear and, and you know. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. It's kind of what I'm hoping for is here I'm in my, you my, 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 my local election that, you know, there's exactly. enough. There's enough people that are willing to say, you know, it's it's enough is enough, and we'll just get, we're willing to try something different. Right. And, if, and you know, you're I'm trying to take uh, people along the journey with me. You know, trying to be as real and as human as possible. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm not some far off person. I'm just like everybody else. I started washing dishes at 14. You know, <laughs> just just like we're everybody else in working class. You know, yeah. we are the the uh, representatives of the everyday people because we are everyday people. You know, yeah. and um, it's didn't sad. spend my life. We didn't spend our lives trying to designing our lives to be a politician. We kind of right. politics came to us. It came to me late in life. You know, you're a little earlier in life, but still. <laughs> <laughs> but we acted on what we've learned about the bad side of politics. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that's what it's all about. No matter what your political idealism may be, uh, put it all aside. Realize that your your um, your natural rights to just live a free and happy life right now is being dictated by others, okay? By other um, people, yeah, with, with different views on life than you. Yeah, with different views on life. And I mean, uh, it, that is not the way this country is supposed to be. We're not a democracy. So just if one person in the world uh, said it was not okay, you know, that's one person enough to say it's not okay for everyone else. You know, and that's the way um, America is supposed to be. That's why we're a republic. We have a book of rules. You know, we elect certain representatives to swear to uphold uh, that oath. Um, you know, and you're doing your best to uh, do exactly that. So I hope people in your district hear you out and, you know, get you into office um, because it's it is a numbers game. I tell people that all the time. Because they say, oh, you're going to take the votes away from the Republicans or the Democrats or, you know, help them win. Well, that's the point. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's a competition. <laughs> the Republicans are going to take, you know, uh, votes. They're from taking votes from me. <laughs> <laughs> the Republicans, you know, exactly. So our goal is to take votes from both of them 
and get all of those people that don't want to vote or are feeling disenfranchised or, you know, um, whatever the case may be. Uh, we want those groups of people because the numbers show that there's more of them than them. You see what I'm saying? We can break the two party system just by collectively coming together with the numbers that we have and using that voting block to override theirs. Um, so it's, it's simple mathematics. <laughs> uh, all you got to do is vote libertarian, vote third party, vote for somebody else, vote for a, another party other than the two party system and see what happens, you know? Yeah, well, we don't actually have a two-party system. The two parties have manipulated the system to create it so so there's they're the two parties in power. But that doesn't make right. it a two-party system. Exactly. I mean, George Washington, which is kind of my political idol, if you actually have one, is George Washington, the man who walked away, right? right. That that's like no political party. <laughs> <laughs> stay away from political parties. I know you're not going to, but stay away from political parties. Exactly. The last, what, what are the last few warnings to all <laughs> yeah. Americans. Stay away from political parties. You won't, right. but stay away from them. <laughs> right. This was fine and dandy, but you know. <laughs> you guys and there's a reason for it because he knew that parties would become more important than people. And right. And that's and we've seen that play out here in California with things like AB5, or where their their political ideology is more important than the fact that they're hurting tens of thousands of freelance workers and and gig workers. You know the fact that they're being hurt. Right. They're now being a uh, we're being called uh, labor brokers and and Trumpians and you know they don't even engage with it. You know no you've destroyed our livelihoods or the way we've chosen to work. You know, we don't want to be regular employees, right? That's kind of the whole reason we're gig workers or we're freelancers. If we wanted to be a regular employee, I could go get a job driving an Amazon van, right. but I don't want to work 10 hours a day like that. I want to be able to choose my hours and what days I work and how often, right? I want the flexibility that allows me to be a politician at the same time and allows right. me to come on here and do counterpoint videos. If I was a 10 hour a day Amazon, the van driver i wouldn't be able to do all this i'd be too right. tired I, yeah. I you know i'd have to work my this schedule around that rather than my work schedule around what i feel is more important long term is the politics in my community mm -hmm. and now sadly you're um uh not just gig workers that are being demonized for wanting to earn a living for themselves you know people that are self-employed uh or uh small businesses now you know what i mean <laughs> small well, businesses unless you are deemed an essential business you're not allowed to operate your business right now so if you own a car dealership mm -hmm. uh, I saw a story about a, a guy that owns a few car dealerships in um, uh, you know a, a city in Wisconsin and he says if I'm not able to open up business and conduct business soon I'm gonna lose everything I created in my entire life and that's awful for some businesses to reflect on no matter how small or big they may be if you are the one in charge and have been deemed <laughs> non-essential by what's you know the government what's going on um then you're not allowed to earn a living for yourself so a lot of people are affected by this teachers now um taxpayers have been paying into the education system for how long now you know and then all of a sudden Teachers are thrown to, thrown to the side. Kids and students are thrown to the side. Parents are thrown to the side. Nobody cares. Um, so you're right. Uh, the two-party system has merged into one to become imperialistic in its in its you know nature. Uh, so they only care about control. Uh, the Democrats openly have spoken about controlling you know healthcare, education, whatever the case may be. Now we're seeing the Republicans say that and speak that out loud so they are reflective of one another um which is which should make it more apparent than anyone and ever with uh of why we should make a stand and how they're hurting our economy is um is uh, a, a big red flag because they are pretty much throwing the future generations under the bus with these trillion dollar bailouts um and pretty much hitting print on uh, you know on, on the money on the currency so they're inflating the dollar is pretty much making it value valueless uh so pretty soon uh, the dollar will be worthless what will it be good for nothing at all you know especially if people aren't allowed to go out there and you know use their labor to create it 
So and price creating some wealth. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and the long term economic damage there's going to create the, some long term emotional damage. There's going to be. I was talking to my my counselor the other day. You know, I still see a counselor once a month, and they were talking. She's had an uptick in business, and so there's a lot of people are going to be stressed out. And the longer yeah. this goes on, the, the higher the economic devastation goes because it's not just that business owner; it's everybody he pays. Yeah, it's all, and then all their families and all that ripple effect yeah. is yeah. going to go down. And you know, economic devastation, economic pressures is one of the leading causes of suicide. And mm -hmm. we're we're going to see it's not just about choosing people dying from this from the illness. We've got to think about these long term side effects of our response yeah. to it. And the patients. I mean. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to increase increase the suicide rate. People that are suffering from depression, um, those type of you know mental disabilities, etc. Uh, bipolarism, alcoholism is now being openly promoted. You know, you have celebrities drinking, and uh, you know, telling people I've been drinking more, and more people have been drinking more because of it. Uh, so. Uh, you have married couples that uh, are suffering because of it, believe it or not, because uh, they are used to being separate from each other. And um, that, um, I, I guess, creates some bit of uh, comfort for some relationships because they're not used to being up under each other 24 hours a day, you know? Yeah, right. Not every, uh, you know, me and Christina, we get along just fine being all, all together all the time, but not every yeah. relationship works like that. Not every person exactly. works like that, right? Relationships right. are different. We're all human, right. we're all, we've all got these mass differences. And yes. so that's the reason you, when you find that person who kind of completes you, right? It works so well. It's because yeah. you don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to find with it, but if you're, now all of a sudden you've gotten something that used to work for you. And now all of a sudden it's all different, completely out of your control. I mean, it's one thing if you've kind of in your control and you have to make these changes, but it's all been right. thrust upon. This change has been thrust upon everybody so quickly. And, yeah. and with <laughs> so little information kind of backing it up, because we're kind of starting to find out that those early models were way off. <clears throat> and, you know, which if you understand data collection, you understand why they're way off and you can understand that, okay, they panic. And you don't want to throw them too far into the bus, but at the same time, we do have to hold them accountable for. All right, your profile, your things were way off. Well, how did that happen? And let's not let it happen again in the future. Right. Well, I, I don't even think we should be paying attention to the virus at all. I think if anything, we should be paying attention to the structure of control that government has been propping up this entire time. Now it's so high that we can barely even see over the wall. Um, which is why it's caught so many people off guard and those truth speakers such as myself that have been, you know, sounding the alarm for uh, over a decade now doing their best to try to tell people what's going on and, you know, beating the drum um, are now um, being thrust to the forefront. You know, we're being called on the front lines because we're more in the know. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know about the forced vaccinations, about the, you know, how FEMA can create these disaster centers. And, um, you know, it already it, it has existed for a long time. So if anything, at this point, we need to um, start reacting and standing up against yeah. what's going on. The devastation to our economy is a big red flag. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm calling on everyone to join in the May Day protest. It's been going on forever. Look it up, May Day, May Day protest. <laughs> so May Day 2020, uh, we're asking anyone and everyone, you know, out there in the world, don't go to work. If you have an essential job, <laughs> it's just one day, make a stand with the rest of us that aren't working uh, and that are being forced not to work. Uh, don't go to work. Don't go to your online school. Uh, don't pay any bills. Don't pay your rent. Don't pay. Uh, if you can't pay your rent, then, you know, most likely you're unable to. So uh, those of us that can make a stand with those also people, the uh, landowners, if you are accepting rent, make a stand against the banks and say, no, I'm not going to charge my tenants right now. You know, um, we need to get down to the bottom of what's going on and everybody's hurting financially. So we need to help each other uh, uh, become more prop prosperous out of this situation. All right, Nicholas, thank you for joining us. That's about all the time we've got. We greatly appreciate the time with you today. Oh, uh, thank you. God bless. All right, everybody else, thank you for watching CounterPoint. Um, you can learn more about 
uh, issues we talked about at our website, libertariancounterpoint.com. And you can catch us on Facebook and all the Inst- and all the other Instagram, Instagram and all our very other social media pages. I'll get this ending right one of these days. All right, thanks, Nicholas. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> My pleasure. And thank you again to you, James Jess. May everybody vote for him. Long live. Him. All right, man. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.